Have you ever heard of a luxury skyscraper that's actually sinking into the ground and tilting to one side? It might sound like something out of a movie, but it's very real. Right in the middle of San Francisco stands the Millennium Tower, a high-end building filled with million-dollar condos, rich homeowners, and beautiful city views. It was built to be a symbol of modern luxury and success, but underneath all the glass and glamour, there's a serious problem. The tower is sinking, and not just that, it's also tilting. So how did something like this happen? Who made the mistake? And can it still be fixed? In today's video, we're going to break it all down. How the tower was built, what went wrong, who's being blamed, and what's being done now to fix it. If you enjoy real stories about big construction mistakes, failed planning, and what we can learn from them, make sure to like this video and subscribe to Built to Collapse. Let's get into it. The Dream Tower. The Millennium Tower opened in 2009 and was supposed to be a symbol of wealth, comfort, and modern city life in San Francisco. This 58-story skyscraper wasn't just tall, it was filled with luxury. The building had high-end condos, a fancy gym, a private movie theater, and even its own wine cellar. The people behind the project said it would offer the best kind of living, peaceful, stylish, and with million-dollar views of the city. And many people believed them. Homes in the tower sold fast. Some were bought for over $10 million. It was built in the middle of downtown, close to San Francisco's financial district. An area full of tech companies, banks, and wealthy professionals. Everything about the tower looked perfect from the outside. But deep down, underneath all the glass and concrete, something wasn't right. Something important had been overlooked, and it was only a matter of time before the problem started to show. The first signs of trouble. In 2016, just seven years after the Millennium Tower opened, something strange started happening. Residents began to notice little things that didn't feel right. Cracks were showing up in the walls. Doors weren't closing like they used to. Some windows looked crooked. At first, people thought it might be small fixes, nothing serious. But then engineers were called in to take a closer look, and what they found was shocking. The entire building had sunk more than 16 inches into the ground. Even worse, it wasn't sinking straight down, it was leaning. By 2022, the building had tilted over 22 inches to one side, toward the northwest. That's nearly two feet. Imagine waking up in a million-dollar home, only to find that the floor is slowly tilting beneath you. It became a big story. People started asking, is this building safe? Who's responsible? News crews showed up. Lawsuits started flying. How could something so new and expensive go so wrong so fast? Let's take a deeper look. The foundation flaw. Here's where things get a bit technical, but don't worry, we'll explain it in a simple way. Most tall buildings in San Francisco are built with deep foundations. That means their support goes all the way down into solid rock. Rock is strong and steady, so it keeps buildings from sinking or shifting. But the Millennium Tower was built differently. Instead of reaching the rock, the builders stopped at a layer of sand and clay about 80 feet underground. They used a method called friction piling. That means they put long piles, like giant nails, into the ground, but not all the way to the rock. These piles grabbed the soft soil to hold the building up. Why would they do this? Two big reasons. It saved money and it saved time. But the problem is, sand and clay aren't as strong as rock. And over time, that soft soil couldn't handle the heavy weight of the building. So it began to sink. And since the sinking wasn't the same on all sides, the building started to lean. Who's to blame? Once the problem became public, the finger pointing began. The developer blamed the city. The city blamed nearby construction projects. Some blamed the engineers who approved the plans. Lawsuits were filed left and right. Residents sued the developers. The homeowners association sued the city. And engineers were called to testify. One big argument came from the builders of a nearby project, the Trans Bay Transit Center. They said their construction didn't cause the tilt and that Millennium Tower was already sinking before they began digging. In the end, it became a mess of legal battles, each side trying to avoid paying for the massive repairs. But most experts agreed. The building's original foundation plan was the main problem. Can it be fixed? So, what do you do with a sinking skyscraper? The city brought in new engineers and consultants to design a fix. The plan? Try to stop the building from tilting further by anchoring it into the bedrock after the fact. They started a project called the Perimeter Pile Upgrade, 
Basically, they plan to drive steel piles 250 feet down into the bedrock from the outside edges of the building, then attach them to the foundation. But even this fix had problems. During construction, the building tilted even more. At one point, it was leaning 29 inches northwest, almost a foot more than before the repairs began. Work had to be paused and adjusted. As of 2024, some of the work has helped slow down the tilt, but the building still isn't perfectly stable. Engineers say the fix is helping, but not perfect. Life inside a tilting tower. So what's it really like to live in a leaning tower? Surprisingly, many people say they don't notice the tilt in daily life. Inside their homes, things often feel normal, but not always. Some have said their windows don't open or close properly. Others have noticed small cracks in the walls or floors that feel just a little uneven. Then there's the money side. Some owners tried to sell their condos, but the prices dropped fast. A unit that once sold for $2 million is now worth way less. Buyers got scared. Insurance became harder to get, and some banks even refused to give loans for units in the building. Still, not everyone left. Some people chose to stay. They believe the tower is still safe for now, and they're hoping the repair plans will fix the problems. For them, it's a waiting game, one that comes with a lot of stress and uncertainty. What we can learn from this? The Millennium Tower is more than just a leaning building. It's a warning sign. A reminder that when it comes to construction, cutting costs can cost more later. Foundations are everything, and you can't rush quality. It also shows how cities grow too fast without thinking long term. As more people move into crowded urban areas, developers feel pressure to build higher, faster, and cheaper. But this story proves that without strong planning, these shortcuts can lead to big problems. It's also a lesson for everyday people. If you're buying a home or investing in property, ask questions. Know how it was built. Understand the risks. Don't be blinded by shiny windows and beautiful views. Because even the tallest, prettiest buildings can hide deep problems. Where things stand now. As of now, the Millennium Tower is still standing. People still live there. Repairs are still ongoing. The tilt seems to have slowed. Engineers are hopeful that it won't get worse, but nobody knows for sure. There's even talk of turning this into a case study in engineering schools. How not to build a skyscraper. For San Francisco, the tower is both a curiosity and a cautionary tale. Tourists sometimes stop to see the leaning tower of San Francisco. Locals shake their heads and wonder how it ever happened. But deep down, everyone knows. This isn't just about one building. It's about what happens when big dreams skip the details. Sad and honestly, pretty scary. It was built to be one of the most beautiful and luxurious buildings in San Francisco. But now it's known for something else entirely, sinking and leaning right in the heart of a major city. What was meant to be a symbol of success has turned into a warning sign for what happens when big mistakes are made. So what do you think? Would you live in a building like this, even with a great view? And who should pay for the repairs, the builders, the city, or the people who bought homes inside? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. We'd love to hear what you think. And if you enjoyed this story, make sure to like the video and subscribe to Built to Collapse. We break down real-world failures and the lessons behind them in a way that's easy to follow, honest, and always interesting. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.